can't believe it's happened again. Hey, Muhammad. Yeah, Sean here. Uh, are you sick or something at the moment? Do you have COVID? No, yeah, it's fair. It's 2031, isn't it? But, okay, if there's no excuses, where's my scout report for Ross County? I gave you this warning. I swear it was yesterday or something. It doesn't feel like that long ago. Where's my scout report? Like, I could understand not giving a scout report for the Hungarian team, but these guys are the champions of Scotland. Like, come on. Mate, this is your last warning. Your contract's are expiring at the end of the season, okay? So, you know, pick your game up big time. If anything else happens before that contract expires, you're gone. Not just as a chief scout, but as a scout overall, okay? Cool. See you later. Unbelievable. Hello everyone and welcome to episode number 123 of Husabic Heroes here on Sean Does FM. I hope you are doing well and coming up in today's episode we do have the start of the Champions League group stage for 2031 and hopefully 2032 in the knockouts we take on the Scottish champions in Ross County and we've also got an Icelandic Cup final as well. So if you are looking forward to today's episode then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video and if you haven't done so already and are enjoying this series here on the channel also remember to hit that subscribe button and turn that notification bell on as well it is greatly appreciated but before we go a little bit more in depth with this group which we have got and today's opposition in Ross County as much as we can without our scout report we have played quite a few domestic games off the back of yesterday's episode which did include this draw as well as the playoff which did make sure we made our way through to the group stages if you missed that I'll leave a link to it in the top right corner but a big domestic recap coming up because we have done quite a bit of stuff it is fair to say first off we did have our Molka Bikaran semi-final right off the back of that tie against Budapest Hombed in the Champions League playoff we absolutely thumped them there with our rotation team picking up a 7-0 win a hat-trick to Joe Nata the highlight of that one and we did defeat that second tier opposition to make sure we make our way through to yet another Molka Bicker in final which makes sure that that is the second game of today's episode that Icelandic Cup final but it is going to be against not HK who you might have expected it to be against based on recent history here in Iceland but against Phil Kier instead as they picked up a 1-0 win in the other semi-final we'll check in on those guys shortly when we update you guys on the domestic league table but Volsunga versus Phil Kier for the Icelandic Cup in the second game of today's episode after we absolutely battered the second division opposition there in that semi-final and off the back of that we did just struggle in our next two games a little bit in the league unfortunately for the first time this season we did drop points but we did have a fairly good excuse for this one I think it is fair to say we did decide to play for an international break and as you can see on screen our team was quite heavily affected when the email came through it did say that there would be seven players missing I thought we could cover that with the positions that were unavailable but then after saying we didn't want to postpone the game another 20 or so players were selected for international duty as well so it did really test out the depth here at Volsung we even had to promote some players who are actually leaving us at the end of this season who are down in the under 19s and unfortunately we somehow didn't pick up a win in this game against Nuts here we absolutely dominated things stats wise but just didn't quite click as much as we usually would so that was the first drop points of the season thankfully though in the second game through that international break we did bounce back against Nuts KR with a 2-0 win thanks to a double from Joe Nata who did miss that first game of the international break as his match load was a little bit heavy and off the back of that we clicked right back into gear with our better players coming back from the international break a 7-1 win against Kef Levick that meant that in our next game against HK a win would have secured us the league title in front of our newly expanded Husevika Vola as well so that was quite a big occasion and we did pick up a very very comfortable 6-1 win after one of our former players Hugo Dupont got sent off in the first half Nicholas Zimmerman picking up a hat trick in that game and that did secure us the league title for a ninth season in a row in the save and then we beat Breda Blick by a slightly narrow margin of 2-1 away from home leading into this game albeit they are third on the table and that was with our rotation team. So we're still yet to lose in this current domestic season. But unfortunately, yet again, we have dropped our perfect season 
late on. So what that means is we are champions, 15 points clear of HK with two games left to go in our season. They look fairly comfortably placed there in second, so should yet again be in conference league qualifying for next season. Breda Blick also in a quite nice spot there. They have a big enough gap on Keflavik that they should be making their way through into conference league qualifying for next season as well. And then it's a big battle for that fourth spot, probably between Keflavik and Phil Kerr with only three games left. They are only separated by one point. So that is how the domestic table does look going into the last few games of the season. But we have wrapped up our ninth title in a row in the top division here in Iceland. Really all that's left to play for are those last conference league qualifying spots, which Phil Kerr could get if they did beat us in the Icelandic Cup final later on in today's episode. But the focus now turns into the continental football for the rest of 2031 and the start of 2032, hopefully anyway, as long as we can have a decent run, unlike we have had ever since we did make the Europa League final a few seasons ago. There is what our group does look like. Real Sociedad, Ross County, Leicester City, and us in our first game is pretty much must-win territory as we do take on the defending Scottish champions in Ross County. As we ran through yesterday, they are a team completely made up of players who are grayed out ones, so they can't see their attributes, we can't scout them, we have no idea how good any of these players are, but with that being the case, you would like to think we are going to do a decent job here against the three and a half star reputation champions of Scotland. We'll just do a quick look through though at the Scottish Premiership over the past few seasons, seeing as we don't have much of an idea about today's opposition, because no doubt when you guys saw that Rangers were the team in qualifying over the past few episodes in Ross County automatically made their way through to the Champions League. You probably wondered what the heck had happened to Celtic. And as we look at the past few winners of the Scottish Premiership, since we have started this save, it is quite obvious to see that Rangers have been completely dominant up until last season. Ross County really only popping up over the last two seasons, but Celtic have certainly faded away. They last finished runners-up back in 2027. 28. And if we have a look at the results over the past few seasons, you will see Celtic have actually been closer to being in a relegation battle than they have been to qualify for Europe. So that is very interesting developments here around the 2030 mark of the save. As I said, they were last in the European mix way back in 2027-28. But it is Ross County who did win the league last season, upsetting Rangers for the first time in quite a while. And they did win the league quite comfortably as well by nine points so that is the reason that we are taking these guys on in our first game of the Champions League in today's episode but as I said this should be a team based on what I have been able to tell and by the fact that we can actually get a scout report on these guys that we should be quite capable of beating we are at full strength going into this game as well so there's no real excuses for us not to be winning this one especially in Iceland and we'll come back shortly and get the Champions League group stage underway against Ross County. And seven minutes gone, we have our first highlight of our first Champions League group stage game. We try and pick out someone there in the mixer. I think it might have been Bussero. Gaya is headed clear, but we do continue to hopefully put some pressure here on Ross County. Hopefully that's a good theme throughout this game. And there's an opener at the seven minute mark, Kalen Rakasan. And we already go 1-0 up in the first highlight of the game here against the champions of Scotland who are in that dark purple uniform. We got the ball back off a clearance from that corner, Lee Van Tam over there for Nicholas Zimmerman, picks out the run there of Rakasan, takes that around the goalkeeper, puts it away, and we are already 1-0 up here in our first Champions League game. And shortly off the back of that opener, we do have another highlight, Huel Lurvik does pump that deep, but Peters is there to tidy things up for the Scottish champions, they play that ball over the top, and Kirkpatrick slightly in behind, and in fact, Duncan, a good chance here, thankfully that's a weak shot there, and Huel Lurvik can make a save, so that's a bit of a chance there for our Scottish opponents, but it does remain 1-0, Volsinger coming up to the 15-minute mark. And up to the 20-minute mark, we do have a free kick here, Lasana Dumbia tries to put that top left corner, but it's a decent save there by Greg in goal, and this highlight is going to continue. Thiago Polo wins the ball, but it's a poor header, and it is Ross County who are back in possession so far. Stats-wise, this game has actually been quite even. Hopefully that changes as we do get into the second part of this first half, but it is yet again, Ross County in position, Duncan in behind, takes it around Will Lurvik, and apparently he's onside, so Ross County have an equaliser, 
and maybe that might spell the death of our high defensive line here because it just looks like so far Ross County are getting in behind us far too easily. We have been trying a high defensive line so far this season and based on this against a team like Ross County, might not work at European level. That is a bit of a disappointing goal to concede. It is one all after 21 minutes. And only a few minutes off the back of that equaliser to Ross County, we are back down the other end. We do have a throw-in. Kenny Boreal can't quite get back on the end of that ball back there from Frederick Larson, but does get in the way of that pass there by one of the Ross County players. So we might be able to create another chance from this bit of play here right down the final third of Ross County. Bussero Gay tries to loop that over the top there for Frederick Larson. Ross County trying to get something going there on the counter-attack, but a good foot in there from Bussaroge with that sliding tackle, and we might try and get something going again here down our left-hand side. Bussaroge unleashes that top right corner. That came out of absolutely nothing. An attempted tackle there on our Senegalese defensive midfielder somehow gets a shot off off the back of it and rockets that into the top right corner. That is one heck of a goal. I fought here. That wasn't going to amount to much, but Bussaroge with a heck of a hit and not much space, and we get our lead back 2-1 after 25 minutes, and now we have a free kick shortly off the back of that, and a good save there from Greg and goal for Ross County. That was going into the top left corner. It remains 2-1, coming up to the half-hour mark in favour of Volsinger. And shortly off the back of that most recent flurry of highlights, we do have another just shy of the half-hour mark yet again. Duncan gets in behind, tries to chip the goalkeeper, thankfully. Goes just over the bar. I think we are going to go back to a standard defensive line here because this high one certainly looks like it's getting exposed a little bit, but we're still 2-1 up after 31 minutes. And up to the 42-minute mark for our next highlight, we do have a throw, and I think we'll just calm things down defensively, dropping back to that standard defensive line instead of that higher one because Ross County certainly exposing that so far in this game. Zimmerman squares that for Larson, but one of the Ross County defenders gets in the way of the goal that was pretty much just put it on target and it would have found its way in the back of the net. If not for that defender, we put that corner into the mixer, but unfortunately no one can get their head on the end of that and it looks like we'll be going into half time here with a 2-1 advantage unless anything does happen here in these two minutes of added time. Interesting to see that Raul Sociedad are 2-0 up away at Leicester in the other game in our group, but that's a little bit of a sketchy first half from us there, I think it is fair to say. It hasn't been too great defensively. Thankfully, though, we got that opening goal fairly early on there through Kalen Rakasan and Basaroge with a wonderful strike into the top right corner. Made sure we do have a one-goal advantage going into the second half of this game, and that's pretty much a must-win one for us as well. Otherwise, we might get dragged down into the mire of worrying about qualifying for the Europa League knockouts, but we are going to make one change here at half time, Thiago Polo on a 6.5 and a yellow card at centre back. So for him, we will bring on Gaetano de Prisco and hopefully perform a little bit better here in the second half and grab a cushion goal and pick up three points in our first Champions League game. And very early on here in the second half, it is a goal kick to Ross County, but Bassero Gay does win the ball back for us here. We do get out to Kaylin Rakasan, who floats out to the left hand side. Nice ball back into the mixer there. For Le Van Tam, right on the edge of the box. That is a very close call. That this could be an early penalty, and that is exactly what we would be after to grab a cushion goal in this one. We'll just wait for VAR because, as I said, that looked like a really close call. That for an early penalty, Ali Ramadan picks up an early yellow card in the second half for some reason, but it is just outside the box. We'll see if anything comes. From the subsequent free kick, doesn't look like it is going to as the ball goes out there to Ali Ramadan. It remains 2-1 early in the second half. And up to the 55-minute mark, we do have Kenny Boreal on the ball here on our left-hand side. We play it back through our defense, and we try and get something going here to hopefully grab that cushion goal, which we are after, as I said before the game at halftime. Drop points in this game would be a bit of a disaster at home. I think it is fair to say any drop points against this Ross County team is not going to help any of our big three teams in this group. And there's a ball over the top there for Kalen Rakasan, and he will grab a goal, puts that in the bottom right corner to grab a double, and that is the cushion goal, which we were after here against the Scottish champions. It is now 3-1, 10 minutes into the second half. Took a little while for us there to get going forward, but Nicholas Zimmerman back to Bussero Gay. He is having one heck of a game, and Kalen Rakasan 
picks up a double to make it 3-1 Volsinger. And not too long off the back of our third goal, it is a throw in here for Ross County, albeit deep inside their own half. They try and play a ball deep there, but Lear Van Tam wins it. Good chance here for Zimmerman, but that's a great save there from the Ross County goalkeeper to keep the margin to two goals for now. We'll wait and see if anything does come from the subsequent corner to Prisco, but that is straight in the hands of Casey Gregg. Yet again, it's still 3-1 at the hour mark. And up to the 68 minute mark, we're going to make our last two substitutions of this game. We've got a few players out there on red hearts and two of them aren't on green ratings either. So those are the players that we are going to take off Lasana Dumbia on a 6.8 Corral Giroux ready-made replacement for him. So he will come on for these last 20 minutes and also Frederick Larson on a 6.9 red heart. We will bring on Chaka Traore for him as we try and see out this 3-1 lead for the last 20 minutes. And up to the 75 minute mark, we do have a free kick here, but that has far too much depth on it there from Chaka Traore. And there might be a chance here for Ross County to do something through the big boot there of Casey Gregg. But the Prisco does win that ball in the air for us, gets out to Lee Van Tam. And we try and get something going here down our right hand side. Giroux up to Zimmerman, back to Van Tam. Good short liquid passing here from Bolsinger in this highlight. Finds its way into the box. It's Chaka Traore, far post. Good chance there. Just puts it over the bar still. 3-1 inside the last 15 minutes. And up to the 81 minute mark now. We do have a free kick. Chaka Traore takes it. And unfortunately can't quite link up there. With I think it was Zimmerman at the far post. But a good foot in there by Giroud. And we do get the ball back here. Inside the opposition half. And a good chance again here for Chaka Traore. Just puts it wide. But we still have our two goal advantage. Inside the last 10 minutes. And not too long off the back of that most recent chance. Yet again. It will be Chaka Traore stepping up for a free kick. Tries to put that top right corner. Comes off the corner of the crossbar. Giroud puts this far post. And unfortunately, no one can get their head on the end of that. Chaka back out to Corral Giroud. So some good sustained pressure for us here late in this one. But no one's there at the far post, I think. That might be the highlight done and dusted. We'll just wait and see Bussero Gay. To Giroud, there's a free kick. In fact, it's going to be a second yellow card here for Ruben Kirkpatrick. So the last five minutes, Ross County are down to 10 men. And we do have a two-goal advantage. Still 3-1 up. And we are inside injury time in this game. Leicester City with two late goals might be grabbing a draw in their home game there against Real Sociedad. That could be big because that means we should, hopefully, be top of the group after the first match week, but after a little bit of an early scare in that one, I think it is fair to say things certainly calmed down once we did shift from that high defensive line to a standard one, but in the end, it was a solid 3-1 win for us there against Ross County, as you would expect, considering the fact they had a bunch of grayed out players, Kalen Rakasan with two goals and an assist, Basaroge with a goal and an assist, and Nicholas Zimmerman also picking up an assist. They were the key performers for us. In that game, we dominated the game, I think it is fair to say, especially after that first half hour. And in the end, it's a fairly comfortable 3-1 win, but that might be the depth of the high defensive line, potentially, if that's going to struggle against a team like Ross County. But all is well. That ends well. We pick up three points in our first game of the Champions League. And indeed, as you can see on screen there, about halfway up, not too far above my head, Leicester grab two late goals there. So we are top of the group after they draw. With Real Sociedad, they will be our opponents in tomorrow's episode. That double header, that is going to be a lot tougher than what happened in today's episode, I would suggest. But a good start to Champions League group play here for us. We are top of the group nice and early. We've only got a few days gap until that Malka Bicker and final against Phil here. Probably means we're going to put out our rotation teams. We'll come back shortly, run you guys through the team sheets for that one, and hopefully pick up yet another domestic quadruple. And here we are for the Molka Bicker and final away from home. There is the Phil Kier lineup, which you will not recognize at all. But we're here for our team. It is the full rotation. And not many players who featured in that last game, only those ones who did come on off the bench. Our bench for this one as well is made up of players who didn't feature in that Champions League game either. So we are putting out the full rotation. They've been good for us domestically so far this season. Hopefully they can win us yet another Icelandic Cup here. And at the four minute mark, it does look like we're going to have our first highlight of this game. The ball finds its way into the back of the net. But before that, it is a free kick here for Patrick Nygaard. He is quite good at those that just kisses the top 
of the crossbar goes out for a goal kick, but encouraging early signs here for our rotation team in the Icelandic Cup final, and not too long off the back of that first highlight, Jonata finds his way onto the ball, the very promising Brazilian striker, and he puts that in the bottom right corner, his 18th goal of the season. I'm really hopeful he might work his way to being our starting striker for the next European season because he does have a boatload of potential wanted by some big clubs recently. Has this young striker been after we purchased him in last season's transfer window? Good finish there, and he puts us 1-0 up early in this cup final. And up to the 15-minute mark, we do have a free kick here. Chaka Traore finds Joe Nata tight, and Anderson somehow gets that beyond the Phil Kerr goalkeeper. And after 15 minutes, we are already 2-0 up, and this already looks like it might be easy cruising here for our rotation team. Chaka takes this short to Joe Nata on the edge of the box, finds Anderson. A little bit of disruption there, and in the end, he's just able to take that in behind their defence and swat that away. 2-0 Volsunga at the 15-minute mark of the Icelandic Cup final. And up to the 34-minute mark for our next highlight. So a little bit of a break there since that opening flurry that we did have with those two early goals. We did have a throw on there, but the Phil Kier goalkeeper claims that fairly safely, but boots it deep, and we are back in position even if we do have to play that all the way back to Tomas Diaz in goal. But De Prisco gets that to Andy Harwood back in there for the Icelandic international. Brynja Galtason links up with Paul Stein Anderson, one of three Icelandic internationals in this team, but Patrick Nygaard starts to cut it inside there from the right wing, tries to put that top left corner, but a decent save there from Helgeson in goal for Phil Kier, and that will keep it at 2 0 for now. We'll just see if anything does come from the subsequent corner. It is intercepted. We'll have yet another corner off the back of that because it was put out there by a Phil Kier player. So, yet again, Giroud will try and look for someone at the near post, can't quite find them. Joe Nata. Looks to tidy things up, but I think that might be the highlight. Still 2-0 up with 10 minutes left in this first half. And it is half time in this Icelandic Cup final. Good performance here from our rotation team. Phil Kier are yet to fire a single shot in this game. We've had two clear-cut chances, and it looks like we've put both of them away as well. So it's going very well for us so far. No changes needed at half time as we take a 2-0 lead into the second half of our Icelandic Cup final. And up to the 73 minute mark, no highlights so far in the second half, so things have certainly quietened down there since that opening 15 minutes or so that we did have, but Patrick Nygaard down to a red heart, we will bring on one of our newer signings here at the club in Blagavest Ogninov, he was the player that we did sign just in case we did let go of Nicholas Zimmerman, in theory he should actually be a little bit better than him in terms of his attributes for that right wing role, so he is now out there and we do have a throw in shortly off the back of making that change as we do have a few more players now who have dropped down to a red heart as well. So we might make one more substitution off the back of whatever happens here at the 75 minute mark. But Chaka Traore does win the ball back for us. There's Joe Nata. What can he do? Gets it out to Chaka Traore yet again. Andy Harwood puts it far post for Ognanov, but just puts that over the bar. And we're going to make our second substitution at this time. Giroud down to a red heart. We will bring on a player who came through our youth intake a few seasons ago in Valdemarsson for these last 15 minutes as we do still hold a 2-0 lead. And up to the 77 minute mark, we do have another highlight yet again. We're probably going to make another substitution off the back of this one as Chaka Traore is down to a red heart, but he gets a chance to try and seal it for us here and he makes sure that he does. It's an assist from Ogninov after hitting that ball before over the bar and that should absolutely make sure we are going to win the Icelandic Cup and the domestic quadruple Yet again, simple ball over the top there from Ogninov. Chaka Traore, too much pace as we are about to take him off. And he should seal the result here, making it 3-0 with about 12 minutes left. He will come off late in this one. I think with our options left on the bench, Fabio Maliano will come on for him. He will go out to the right wing. Ogninov on the left, and we are 3-0 up with 12 minutes left. And we are about to enter injury time of this Icelandic Cup final. It's been pretty routine, it is fair to say, despite us using our rotation team, it does show that we do a pretty good squad depth here at Volsung, at least in terms of the domestic competitions. And yet again, we complete a domestic quadruple by picking up a fairly comfortable 3 0 win there against the Phil Care team, which never really threatened us, at least in anything that we did see in those highlights throughout that game. But a very good backup striker leading that lineup there in Joe Nata, and we make sure we win the domestic quadruple off the back of a 3-0 win in that Icelandic Cup final. 
and back in the inbox off the back of that Molka Bicker in final and yet again as we said a few times there we pick up the quadruple here domestically so it is another perfect season more or less for us here in Iceland and that is a pretty comfortable way to do it as well 3-0 there over a Phil Kier team who did somewhat upset HK in the semi-finals of that competition and that will do it for today's episode a quick reminder too of how the Champions League group does look like off the back of the opening game of that we are on top off the back of Real Sociedad and Leicester drawing in the other game in our 3-1 win there against Ross County but that will do it for today's episode if you did enjoy that start to the Champions League as well as that win in the Icelandic Cup final to make it another domestic quadruple here then do remember to go down below leave a thumbs up on the video and if you haven't done so already and are enjoying this series here on the channel also remember to hit that subscribe button and turn that notification bell on as well we will come back tomorrow for solely champions league purposes now at least for the rest of this week and the start of next week anyway we have got a home game against the defending europa league champions in leicester city and off the back of that we travel to spain to take on eric ten hags real sociedad so those should be a bit tougher than what we face today there at home against Ross County. So that's what's coming up in tomorrow's episode. We've only got two domestic games in between now and then to finish off the domestic season. So hopefully everyone will be fit and available for both of those games. And until then, thank you very much for watching. Keep on keeping on and I'll see you then. Cheers.